Okay. Welcome all. On behalf of Council for Creative Education, I'm Hiram Kulkarni. Welcome you all. Along with me, I have Shirin. Shirin, just say hi to all. Hello, everybody. Hi. So for how long this was interrupted in between. Mm -hmm. Then I can repeat that part. Uh, I guess I haven't been able to hear my voice again for myself. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. so, okay. Problem. So I guess I guess you can be able to see. Okay. So let's start uh, from maybe maybe. Shiri, last Shiri, I can I can hear your voice from my. Uh, so please mute yourself. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, so okay, so this is one of the part which is the uh, uh, in which in, in which the Finland's uh, educational development comes from the point uh, from the point being that it is it is one of the Nordic countries and uh, if you see the perspective, it's it's just a three thousand uh, just uh, five point three million population uh, uh, with the spread of more than. 305,000 square kilometers, which is quite a huge area with a small population. So this gives uh, some something which you can be able to see that it is quite a per capita. It's quite a huge land which you are there. At the same time, the GDP is quite high, top five countries, which is like a 33,000 uh, dollars on an average. Uh, there are like Finland is known for the uh, its its lakes. You can see the Finnish flag has a two colors. One is a blue and uh, white here. White signifies snow, uh, about which we discuss that almost for uh, three to four months of year nowadays because of maybe you can consider it as global warming phenomenon that only three to four months you can see winter uh, or the snow. Uh, remaining uh, uh, seven uh, to eight months, you cannot see snow, but you can see that there is a lot of untimely rain also nowadays. But the point here remains that the case here is that it has a snow in place. That's why the you can see the significant significant of the part here. Hello. Yes. Yeah. 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 One second. Hold on. Hello. Hello. Because because you have opened any of the our CC's browser, you close all other browsers from your side. It's not problem from my side. Okay, so the so the society as a whole traditionally is quite homogeneous, um, and 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 uh, the the history goes in a such a way that Finland was earlier been maybe hundred years back almost uh, uh, got freedom from Russia, uh, and and actually the so the so the being a small country it was been isolated and closed for as a as a as an independent person, even the there is a less distribution uh, of the differences between the income levels. What does this mean? That 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 there is equity in place. Uh, traditionally, equity and equalities are the highest qualities which are being considered within Finland. Finland also knows for its another word called sisu. So sisu is nothing but a quality that every Finn is having here, uh, like it is supposed to be having, uh, in which to handle the situation in, in case of issues and problems and to face the problems with courage and uh, uh, resilience. You may call it as a parallel word to perseverance for this part. Uh, so at the same time, this is a, a typical example of a, Finland is a typical example of the welfare state. 
so where is the distribution of the wealth is happening as per the welfare state state norms so practically it's you can see that there is a large public sector is there as far as the individuals are concerned they are quite straightforward uh, so we say here is that like um, uh, like i i came to finland almost 11 years back and i i could see that this really prevails well that it's a really no nonsense uh, community uh, means that you have to stick to the point come come to the specific areas and um, there is a famous uh, talking happening is that if 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 there is a one thing feels like is a silence here peace uh, and so that that signifies the uh, why it is uh, quite a, a straightforward and uh, very less words for describing anything so that's a real finish quality <laughs> what we can able to see here uh, shirin can you hear me now hello hello shirin can you hear me now yes i can hear you yeah okay so 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 who would who would want to comment on this no actually i would just like to say that this uh, as you you were saying that there are some peculiarities of this society so this education providing education to all is also a peculiarity of this society you will not find it uh, as similar uh, as in other uh, states and nations at the, at that at that level that where if you go into a small county where there only 100 people are living still the education level is the same for all all the people yeah that's what i just wanted to add okay. yes exactly i guess i guess i i guess now 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 we'll come to that point itself that with a such a uh, uh, problem uh, being the weather uh, the conditions here uh, all other things the population is less what constitutes here is a is a is a is a basic uh, how we can be able to develop this all these things as a as a finland as a nation here is its basic as a education system so this is a typical diagram of coming to the concept that what exactly was the education system in 1970s so you can see that this is a kind of typical part there is a basic elementary school which is from age 7 to 10 uh, after that the students can be able to after that can go to either way civic schools or you can say it as a something like a more applied kind of schools applied science kind of school in the civic schools and rest will go to the grammar school or to the arts as well as to the physical education uh, followed by some arts and uh, cultural issues and uh, taking care of dramatics and so on these are the typical bifurcations are here uh, there was a one small piece where you can be able to switch between after the folk, folk school you can be able to go to the grammar school and so on but it was quite a monolithic structure like you have to go straight in the one direction this was the system in 1970s practically uh, by the way all these references has been taken from various sources but one of the key source which i will definitely recommend for all of you to read is finish lessons by pasi salbergs uh, he is one of the well known author i guess everybody know his name very well from finland uh, and and so so uh, you can be able to read his book of finish lessons there is a next version of finish lesson 2.0 is also here uh, and that is also quite amazing to read actually so that's quite key. gives a detailed analysis how the finland developed its education and at the same time what are the current issues what the finland is handling and what could be the future things what others can learn as well as what finland can learn from others so that's that's quite a amazing thing to learn but this 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 gives a typical uh, part before 1970s uh, you if you consider finland status at that time uh, it was considered as a not 100% developed nation to be to be specific uh, it was it was considered as a let's say you can say as a the gdp uh, as well as all the development indexes were quite uh, quite in the middle or average be, uh, below 50 ranks uh, 
so after that finland decided that there is something that they should be able to do on the entire gdp part as well as human development index different parts so they concentrated on two sectors one of which is education and second is healthcare and then they started to develop this sections one by one so there are few changes which have been done within this part historically first thing uh, in 1970s the entire government took a decision that the there should be basic minimum level of education that everybody should be able to get and which is comprehensive basic school which has a maybe from age uh, for from first to sixth grade uh, it is a basic primary school and from seven eighth and ninth is a lower secondary school uh, uh, which is there uh, the education should start only at the age of seven before that there is no education or there is no schools school should start at the but that doesn't stop from the student to learn something so the basic idea here is to develop the curiosity and to develop the interest of a student so that he can be able to uh, uh, curious to know new things understand new things and not to overburden him or her with the facts and data and, and information so this is a major paradigm shift from the first part of this is that the school starts at seven basic primary school and it goes till 16th of age age of 16th so from first to ninth uh, is great from first grade to ninth grade so here also you can see that after that there are two options uh, which 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 most of the students used to take either way to go to the upper secondary schools uh, and or otherwise to the some of them who are interested they could have gone to the vocational education uh, this itself is also another monolithic step but there is a some kind of uh, rearrangement you can see that university level and vocational colleges they are been there and there is you can see some arrows goes from vocational to university so some kind of flexibility has been allocated uh, for the students to go ahead with the uh, if they think that there is a interest is not getting developed in a particular area and they they can be able to see uh, to learn something new they have the possibility to switch between the careers but that doesn't stop uh, uh, from uh, from from getting flexible but that was a bit of less uh, permeable membrane was there between these two area but then the development started in a such a way that this is a current model on which the Finland is really concentrating on. So here is a, you can see that there is a, a pre-primary education. Now the Finland has taken decision from 2015th of August that pre-primary school will come under the education perspective, uh, but which is at the age of six. Uh, but again, here the concentration is to develop the interest and discipline of a student, not giving information and data. Uh, and 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 then and then it goes to the basic education. Now here you can see a lot of diagram arrows here and there, quite flexible structure. And you can be able to see that at the age of 16, there is a option of going to the general upper secondary, uh, after which you can go to the universities or pure sciences graduation, or the vocational education where which is a practical applied part and which you, you can be able to continue further with the University of Applied Sciences, mainly with the uh, more towards practical applications uh, like carpentry, uh, coming to the hairdressing uh, and part, so which is like, a, or, or also with the robotics, uh, coming with automation, all these parts which come. Also there is an option also to go with the work experience or apprenticeship and go to the final uh, further qualification in vocational education. So the question obviously arises that uh, what is the percentage of the students goes in this area? Uh, surprisingly, uh, to our facts, when we came here and also we also learned about all these parts, uh, that that the vocational education and this entire practical application, almost 50 percent of the students, half of the students go uh, voluntary opts for these courses. 50 percent of the goes to the university level. Uh, Shirin, would you like to comment on this diagram? 
Uh, yeah, here uh, I would like to say that um, as Hiram was telling earlier that there is no uh, school before the age of seven. So it is like uh, they have this uh, pre-primary, uh, he, he is very right in that, but uh, they prepare the students to get into the education uh, with a disciplined manner. At the age of six, uh, they have pre-primary education where uh, they, they called it uh, as Eskari in Finland, uh, which they have uh, before grade one, where they uh, teach the students to work in group, uh, to work with discipline, to cooperate with each other. And uh, these all the things uh, they do uh, for one year. And uh, so the student is mentally prepared uh, to uh, go in the first grade. And before that also, uh, they have in their daycares, they have a plan where they focus on the child's abilities like motor abilities and uh, uh, motor development, language development, all these kinds of things. So that is very important here. Uh, they, they have a parents meeting to discuss this plan uh, every term and then uh, they go forward. Uh, with that plan and after the basic education as Hiram was discussing earlier that uh, most of the students uh, select to go to vocational institutions and it is also uh, considered as a at the same level as university education and uh, students go there by choice and it is based on their interest and not only on what grades they get. Generally, they also have entrance exams for vocational institutes and which they need to pass if they want to join those vocational institutes. Yes, Hiram, you can continue. Yes, okay. Thank you. I guess, I guess one of the important factor to here to mention is that the flexibility is mainly uh, given to the individual parts and how they can be able to choose their careers. Uh, they start developing it at the uh, age of 14 itself. So what does this mean is that uh, in the grade of uh, 7th, 8th and 9th grade, which is here, uh, there is a one hour per week is dedicated for the career counseling or the uh, choosing your interest. And in this one hour per week, the, there is a possibility uh, where there, there, there are a lot of uh, interest and aptitude test for an individual can be gone for. There is a career counseling sessions are happening. You can be able to learn about various career objectives which can be there. The students can be able to find out various options in the industry, what is happening in the society. Uh, there are very, many seminars also arranged for the students uh, here. So in fact, uh, from the seventh grade on, onwards uh, till age of 16, so for three years, uh, there is a positive attitude towards what exactly the need of the society, where I should be able to go, uh, that the student is being equipped with. At the same time, what are the strengths, what are the weaknesses, making the SWOT analysis of self, uh, and these are the practices are being developed. Uh, and this is something unique, uh, which which I ca I can see here, uh, is that we were really surprised here. Uh, whenever, like for example, Shirin did a good research uh, by visiting uh, many schools in Finland, uh, as well as we are now interacting uh, with many schools here, and 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 this gives us a great confidence that what is the real benefit is that the students can be able to take their own decision. There is some some factor the parents uh, may be able to influence those things, but the students have the uh, ability and they have the possibility to take their own decisions. And I guess the vocational education, the cho making a choice between vocational or general upper secondary and all these things, it has been more profound decision can be taken by the students. Uh, as well as I guess one, one thing which would like to really mention here is that the Finland gives a much importance to learn in the mother tongue. Uh, so I guess the important part is learning in the Finnish language for the Finnish students and learning and importance of the mother tongue is, is been, is been uh, given at many places. I guess Shirin can comment better on this. Shirin, can you please elaborate on the mother tongue, uh, like the importance of mother tongue in the Finnish education? 
Yes, uh, certainly. Uh, actually, when I was visiting the Finnish schools, I found uh, that when uh, the children who had their first language as Finnish, they used to sit in their classrooms and other children who didn't have their first language as Finnish, they used to go to other classes. So I inquired about it and I what I came to know was astonishing that they said that the other kids who have their mother language other different than Finnish, other than Finnish, they were going to learn their own languages in other classrooms. Because uh, uh, when I talked to the teacher about this, she said that we believe that a person should know uh, to read and write in his mother tongue because a person can think well in his own mother tongue rather than in any foreign languages. So we, uh, we want our children to be uh, thinkers. They should think on their own. They should be able to express uh, on their own. And with their mother tongue, it can be done best. And that's why they encourage uh, learning in their mother tongue and learning their mother tongues even though they are in Finnish schools. And that is really amazing. And it has very positive effects on the brain development of the children as well. Yes, yeah, yeah, excellent. I, yes, yes. I guess, I guess one of the important, uh, uh, okay, okay. One of the important aspects of the uh, entire situation here is is, is concentrating on the uh, core, the core aspect of developing a student as a as an as an individual. Here is a, is is an important aspect which has been shared. Uh, by the way, uh, can you can you able to see my screen? But I guess on the video there is a. There is a much uh, problem. I guess uh, you cannot be able to select on the screens. I guess here. I, I guess I should be able to select. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Now. Okay. Now what? It. Okay. Hmm. So I guess the 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 overall overall model of a Finland education model based in the three different sections as 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 we discussed here. Uh, uh, these changes, whatever we we discuss right now, uh, they are they they didn't come overnight. Uh, they took good amount of time. There was a, sp a special attention which was given how to develop. There is a roadmap which was been developed, and this is described in these three curves. In short, so the first phase of the development in 1980s. They give the importance to the what is the knowledge constitutes, what does the learning mean, and these are the two key components. So, in fact, Finnish uh, educators could be able to predict the importance of internet. Uh, the the what could be there it could be the changes because of the uh, too much of data, and at the same time they could be able to understand how to get the knowledge out of the data. Uh, or, or, or from the information which is being spread uh, quite a large way, and also where is the learning process is happening? What is constituted to the learning process? Also, the I guess one of the important part was given uh, also to the this the central part here is obviously the teacher. Uh, the I guess it has been mentioned at several amount of time, okay, many times that the. Uh, the quality of any uh, education system do not surpass some total of their quality of teachers. This is a quite an important statement because the teachers are the one who are going to create the future generations. And uh, one of the important parts is that how they are encouraging the learning part. And so that is typical, which is one part. But at the start, they did not start with the entire overall on the same day. So it takes rethinking on the theoretical as well as the methodological foundation of a schooling that was been there. In 1990s, uh, learning communities, like how we can be able to develop the learning community, networking, and, and the third part, which is evaluation. You can see here, which is a typical part, that in many countries, whenever there is a educational reforms are going on, the first they concentrate on the evaluation. How can the examinations can be changed? 
this is a typical examples which we could be able to see for example we see in india there is a there is a rival there is a there is a, uh, a typical example of how the current uh, evolution is uh, is taking place whenever there is a discussion about quality of education it is directly linked to the quality of exams but practically you can see that the evaluation is one part of the entire learning process to just get a efficacy or confidence of how much you have learned but that's the beauty of finnish education here the concentration is on the learning and the the education or the evaluation of the entire part comes much later part and it comes as a formative maybe shirin would you like to get the second point more elaborate can you point some more things on this Uh, yeah actually uh, as uh, we were talking that this uh, uh, this journey or like this phases of educational changes are very interesting so they understood that uh, it is uh, not that they are if they change only curriculum and then uh, the trainings is uh, not changed for the teachers then there will not be any difference at such in the uh, education quality so what they did is like they did it step by step like first about the conceptions of what is knowledge what is learning what is teaching and a framework of curriculum was decided then they move towards uh, about the value education i i would like to quote one experience from a finnish class uh, i was observing that class uh, for about a month and then i discussed with the teacher that your class is very well disciplined and they uh, you have a very good rapport with the students so how did you uh, do this so she said i got this class uh, last uh, year like it was of fourth grade so she got that class when they were in third grade and then she said that uh, when i got the class it was very wild and the students were not ready to sit at one place they were not ready to concentrate on the studies uh, to uh, then uh, she said that uh, what i did is for first six months along with the studies i talked to them quite a lot and we set the rules for the classroom like not myself but me and the students we collaboratively uh, set the rules for the classroom and then slowly they began to understand that if they stay quiet if they cooperate with me they will learn better and that's how they give uh, much importance to this value education and uh, how to communicate with each other the networking means like they took uh, uh, into consideration the opinions from the common man the opinions of the parents when they were designing the curriculum of the schools and uh, they were designing the uh, whole structure of how the school should be autonomous and what they should do there and how they should collaborate with each other uh, with the community and on the international level so did it so they did it uh, through uh, various uh, methods especially in the evaluation method what they did, did is that they uh, give the em emphasis uh, on the teachers that that the teachers know their students well and they know which type of evaluation is better for the students to progress so the um, evaluation uh, is like it was not only uh, related to passing them or failing them but it is mainly related to their progress the collective progress of the class and the individual progress of the student so uh, the the school takes the responsibility that if the student is struggling in the studies then the school and the teachers takes the responsibility to help that child to help that student uh, to progress further and they take personal efforts for these things and that's how they were then moved to the third phase of uh, designing the ultimate uh, structures like how it will work how it will go into uh, the productivity and what will be the indicators of quality that they decided in the 2000 onwards uh, phase so now we can see that from 2006 they they are good in their pisa results we will be talking about that 
later but then these are like the indicators of quality that they are maintaining now yes uh, yeah, thanks, 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 Shirin. And I guess, I guess one of the important points to be mentioned here as a part of evaluation here is that there are no exams within Finland. There are no formal, uh, generic, standardized exams uh, till the students goes to the eighth grade, uh, which is at the age of fifteen. Uh, but that doesn't mean that there are no exams before that. There are the uh, assessments. There are the feedbacks. There are the quality indicators which have been decided, there are learning outcomes for each area and these are been monitored very well and that that is not been done at the quite a bureaucratic way, it is been done per school basis. So the school has a total autonomy of deciding what exactly the learning outcomes of the individual part. There is a central core curriculum, national level which has been given. But if you see that core curriculum, it is, it's quite brief. It gives the direction of where are the learning outcomes, what is the capabilities that everybody should be able to get, what are the uh, analysis levels, uh, what are the pedagogical uh, approaches uh, towards development. But this is at a very high level, quite high level. But once it goes down to the uh, actual implementation of that curriculum into syllabus, then it is the then that's that's the responsibility of a school and a teacher not only the school but that boils down to the teacher level and to decide the curriculum to be implemented in the syllabus format that input is been taken from the students as well as from the parents so that is the beauty of this system where the evaluation is not only done uh, uh, or just to make sure that there is a national level grid is there and we are putting all the numbers into place to check the quality but it has been really done to make sure that everyone has been getting the learning aspects quite well. So let's go to the next important part. The, the, the one of the important factor which has been discussed here uh, was about the PISA results. Uh, let me uh, make a point here is that practically you can see that in recent years the Finland has gone down significantly uh, uh, maybe earlier they were in the uh, top three range uh, for all the mathematics science and reading ability but you can see that in last year it is uh, in first top 10 practically uh, but that doesn't uh, take down the importance of Finnish education the reason is that uh, there is no comparison because every country is different. Uh, there is a uh, and, and 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 we can learn from each other a lot. But the basic idea is here is that the uh, the countries which are really topping now the PISA tables right now, uh, the approach is more towards hard working, more towards working uh, uh, with the competition and uh, working with the help of the uh, too much of standardized examination. Whereas here in Finland, uh, what we can we could really see here is that the core importance is given to the learning, and there is a, a competition is not with the others, but competition is with the self. How we I can be able to develop myself into a better individual, and that is that we may think that this is a, something like a, a, a fairy tale, but practically this fairy tale we could see that how it has been really uh, considered into the actual facts, and the human lives are being changed because of that. So I guess this is the really important part which we can be able to see. So starting from 2000 till 2009, uh, in the mathematics, science and reading ability, the Finland has been all consistent uh, in top three uh, in, in these three factors. Uh, in 2009, uh, it was in top five. Uh, and the last one, which was in 2012, uh, which was been there published and now we can be is able to see you in 2014 as well now which has been right now going on uh, the data collection is right now going on for 2014 uh, so 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 you can be able to see that the indicators are getting a bit down but the point uh, remains the uh, say that still it's at the, at the top of the quality without having exams without having the uh, uh, without having the too much stress on the students 
uh, students are quite light uh, about as far as the total learning part is concerned. So this is. So now that brings to the next question: How it is possible? What is the real part behind this concept? So, as said that the in 2009 the countries which were on the top of the PISA test were the Finland, uh, Canada, Korea, Japan, uh, and, and 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 then China came in, came into the picture. The obvious the obvious part here in this case the one of the reason which has been forecasted or which has been given and that's the basic principle of a fin Finnish education is equity in education. Uh, this is the real core principle of Finland education is the and that equity is not only just within the class so that not all the equal students are being concentrated on the class so the difference between the top scorer and the bottom score is quite less. That first is a parameter of equity. Second parameter that within the class there is a difference, there is a very less difference between who is considered as so called as the best performance and least performance, you may say so. Third that the difference variation between the classrooms is also minimal leave about that the variation between the schools is also minimal so if you see the school which is in Helsinki metropolitan area core of the city all the facilities are there and if you see some some school somewhere maybe in a village area or it's a countryside around uh, 200 200 uh, maybe 500 kilometers away from metro area or from major city area uh, with a population of just 1000 still the quality of education is the same. Uh, that's the delivery mechanism and at the same time the learning part is same. That constitutes the equity. There is a misconception which was there uh, and which has been proved wrong uh, with this graph maybe is that if there is a too much of competition and there is a uh, competition which is given to rank the students then the quality is better but in fact it's a reverse this graph signifies that the countries which are having high inequity they are also high in quality uh, and the examples are Canada, Korea and, and Finland whereas the countries which are really low on equity there is a good amount of difference between uh, uh, good performing students and the bad performing students if there is a too much of difference then they have also less quality of education so, so that constitutes the basic fact that the if we can be able to get equity into the practice, uh, then the quality of education is also going to increase. I guess equity of education has many factors. How the classrooms are being structured. Uh, one of the basic concept is how the teachings is been framed, and third, the concept of inclusive education. So, I guess we'll we'll go three these three factors one by one. So maybe first is how the classrooms are arranged. Maybe Shirin, how are the classrooms within Finnish Finland schools are arranged? Yeah. What is the concept of half class? The, maybe. Yeah, the classrooms are arranged so that the students uh, have much place to move. Uh, they can rearrange the classroom according to the need of the topic. Like for example, if they have uh, so in for some period, if they need to do some activity, uh, sitting face to face with each other and making a group of four then uh, they can do it very easily by moving their desks and chairs and uh, that is uh, one thing other thing is they have uh, all kinds of things maybe like a piano and uh, the TV and uh, they, they don't have much of the smart boards at such but they use the blackboards uh, instead of that but they have the projectors as well and uh, another thing is uh, they use the walls very nicely of the classroom where they uh, have the um, creations of the students and all students so it is not so that the best will go to the wall and others will go uh, to their homes but they make make it a point that everybody's creation is exhibited on the classroom walls so which is a very important thing earlier which was Hiram was mentioning about the equity so they, they give uh, equity is like equal accessibility 
uh, to each student. They have equal right to access the education. So it doesn't matter uh, in which area they are living. It doesn't matter the how their socio-economic background is, what their parents are doing. It doesn't matter at all. So in the classrooms also, they take care of that. That everybody should is getting an equal chance to exhibit their things, and they can uh, see the teacher very well. And the concept of half class is also very interesting. Like for example, uh, in the classes like languages and mathematics, where they need to understand the basic concept uh, very clearly, what they do is like for example, if there are uh, there is a class of 30 students, uh, the for the half class, the 15 students will be uh, there in for the mathematics, and 15 students will go to the English uh, language class in some other room and the same English class students when they finish their uh, lecture they come back for mathematics and the mathematics students then go to the English class so that's how they uh, the teachers coordinate with each other and then they do it so that every time they get a limited group of students so they can concentrate more on individual student and they can explain the concepts very clearly and they can understand also that who is not getting it and then they can uh, target that student and concentrate on that student and give him some extra classes about uh, the same uh, concept so that is the beauty of the uh, classrooms and arranging uh, the timetable uh, with the help of half class and one more thing I would like to mention is about the races that they have uh, after each 45 minutes period they have a recess for 15 minutes because in Finland uh, as you all know that the weather is quite extreme in winter and uh, um, so they don't have the windows which they can open for ventilation so what do they think that it is very important for the students to get fresh air and they should move so that when they come back they will be more calm and quiet and interested in learning so that's why for this 15 minutes recess, they go out, they play for a while, and then they come back again and sit for the next lesson. That is the peculiarity of the Finnish uh, education. Yes, Hiram, you can continue. Uh, okay, I guess I guess there there is a one question which has been posted. Uh, okay, for this this part, and I think this is in continuation with with with, with for that. What is a typical day in a school uh, Finland is having? Can you, can you elaborate on this part? Uh, yeah, for maybe for uh, grade 1 to 4, uh, they have a um, day of uh, typically 4 to 5 hours, not more than that. And uh, it depends on each student, which subjects they select. According to that, the school starts. Like uh, if you uh, select certain subjects of group, then uh, you might start your school at 8 o'clock one day. 9 o'clock the other day, 10 o'clock on the third day, and again 8 o'clock on the fourth day. So it varies according to the selection of the subject, but they make it sure that the first graders do not need not attend the school for more than 4 hours or 5 hours maximum uh, during the day. And what they do is uh, during the, uh, let's say, uh, one period is that the teacher is there and she uh, does uh, 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 take the the topic uh, of uh, uh, of for the day uh, and generally they have two successive periods for one subject so they don't sh move from one subject to other subject in 45 minutes generally they have the consecutive periods so for because of that the teachers get more time to experiment uh, to use uh, a more activity based uh, kind of learning and uh, more uh, collaborative ways of learning and uh, that's how uh, uh, they do it there so generally the school if we take that the school is starting at 8 o'clock they will have the first period from 8 to 845 then they will go for this 15 minutes they will again come back at 9 then maybe from 9 to 1030 they might have a long period and then they go for lunch after lunch 
uh, the lunch is there again for 45 minutes and uh, Finnish schools, all Finnish schools provide warm milk, warm meal to their students and teachers as well. So the students uh, get warm meal in their uh, schools and they take full care of the students that it is uh, fully, uh, what you say, um, the food quality is uh, uh, very good and uh, they take care that the uh, students get all the nutrients what is needed for themselves and that's how they do it uh, so after the lunch they might have uh, one period and then they go home so that's how they do it uh, then uh, after the sixth grade uh, they live uh, longer in the schools like, let's say for six hours to seven hours but they increase it gradually like first, second, third, fourth, up to five hours, then for fifth and sixth, maybe up to six hours, and then it goes uh, uh, like a little bit more for the upper graders. That's how they do it. Like you can also see in the pictures there that how they have different kinds of things in their classrooms and uh, how they made use of the classroom structure for their learning. So, uh, this is the way they, they work and this is how their typical day in the school is. Okay, so you can see from this picture which is in front of your screen right now, uh, the typical Finnish classroom. Uh, so here what we can see, observe here is that the kids are having the benches which are quite flexible. So for the activities, they can really move the benches. They are not fixed at one place. And, and I guess uh, whenever they want to do some activity, they just keep the, all the benches to, beside the walls and they can come in the center to have the activities. That's number one. Second thing, all this, uh, what you can see as the uh, so-called artifacts or the presentations on the wall or on the sides, they are being prepared by the students. So they are not ready-made from the market. And in fact, the goal of a teacher is to help teachers to make those artifacts and display each and every artifact, how bad or how good it is on the walls. That gives the possibility to create efficacy or confidence of a student so that he can be able to create more and more quality uh, creations in future. So, Shirin, I guess you can be able to comment on this efficacy part of confidence where of each individual, maybe. Uh, actually, they see to it that every student is active in the classroom and they invite everybody to share uh, their viewpoints and uh, their uh, uh, thinking. Like, that's why the, sub, uh, the questions uh, are uh, always subjective. Like, uh, even in the exams, uh, the teacher uh, make it a point to put uh, at least one subjective question where they need to express their thoughts, their analysis of what they have seen and uh, that's how they learn to think and they learn to uh, process uh, their thinking and they, they learn to express their thoughts in their own words and that has more value than uh, uh, repeating the information uh, from the books. So that is uh, very um, typical of a Finnish school that they uh, they invite the students in front of the classroom to give the presentations. Um, uh, they have, as as Hiram was mentioning earlier, it's like inclusive education. So even they have uh, some um, physically challenged or special uh, children in their classroom, but they get along very well with each other, and they help each other, and that's how they get the confidence of presenting themselves in front of the classroom. Yeah, yeah, okay. I guess I guess there is a, there is a good question there actually that uh, we could see that there are some adults in the classroom, five, six adults. Are they present in the any Finnish classroom? <laughs> okay, so the, these photos are taken during our conference in last year. Uh, every year we have a symposium on creative education uh, which is happening this year in the month of November from 16th November to 19th November for four days. So in last year, these photos are taken during conference and during that we have one day dedicated to visit Finnish schools. 
and to see and experience whatever we have been discussing in that conference to see it in practice, to see it in real. Unless and until you come here and experience whatever we are speaking, you cannot be able to get a real meaning behind that words or expressions, whatever we are discussing. So these are the photos from this part. So during 16 to 19 November uh, 2015, uh, you, uh, you are all welcome to participate in the symposium on creative schools. This year the theme is specific to the creative schools and there are many, many sub-themes which can be here. So on our CC website, which is www.ccfinland.org, this is our main page. You can see on the main page itself, you can be able to see that there is a, a page called uh, a symposium on creative uh, creative schools, uh, uh, and then out of which first two days are dedicated to the workshops, uh, as well as various collaborative learning tools, and as well as visiting to the schools to see how they are been doing in practice. And next two days, there are presentations which uh, last year there were 13 countries were represented, and this year we are expecting more than 25 countries to be represented. Uh, for the entire symposium. Uh, so, so this is our website. On, on the website you can see that third international symposium on creative schools and, and, and you can be able to get the details about the entire part in, on, on this website. Uh, there are fees like registration fees, call for papers is still on. So you are welcome to present uh, the ideas within your own research. At the same time, uh, there is a possibility to display uh, the creative ideas which are done within the schools. There are three kind of presentation modes. One is a physical paper presentation mode, second is a poster presentation mode, and third is a virtual presentation. Also which you can be able to take this benefit of this symposium. So that's how we are being done. So the, I guess one of the question was that, so those those are the people who, 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 who were there actually, uh, were the participants of the symposium. Uh, great. So I guess, I guess we are we are going a bit in detail actually now. Now still we have a few 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 parts to be covered now. Uh, this is a typical example of uh, how the mathematical performance across the various comparing nations uh, for the 15 year students uh, and for the three years. So I guess uh, uh, from 2000 till 2006, the USA has been declining. All other things are declining. Only Finland was increasing as far as the PISA results are concerned. And I guess one of the important facts be, uh, be, uh, be, okay, behind this part was that curve which was there earlier about those three curves or three phases of education uh, reforms. And the reforms which has been taken care into such a way that they are not very fast, but at the same time they are having confirmed steps based on the research and analysis. Uh, how how the feedback has been taken is also quite interesting. Uh, within Finland, there is a very single uh, institute of statistics which takes the feedback and collects the data for entire part. I guess those kind of institutes are there. The good part about this are that entire data and analysis is been presented on the website, and a common citizen can be able to see teachers see principal C, parents C, and they get the feedback from that, that how many students are coming to the call classes, what are their typical learning time, what are their common goals, how many students have left the school, how many students are entered the school, and rest of the things are being really detailed analysis which has been there. And those are accessible to common person. So that's the beauty in which you can be able to see that the Collecting data is one part, but using that data in a normal day-to-day -day life, that's how you can be able to use the ICT in the regular classroom. I guess one of the important part also you might have seen in this in this uh, entire uh, section was also the use of uh, ICT in the classroom. Uh, here in Finland, it is re really believed that the technology is meant to help the the students and it is not to burden the teacher. Uh, uh, there is a there is there is a much much uh, hyper uh, 
discussion which is right now going on uh, mainly to the developing countries is that how much you are going to burden the teachers with the use of technology and you are killing the creativity within the students also by using ready made videos and and uh, you are replacing the teachers and those things here you, you can see that everything you, you are doing with the hands uh, collaboratively working together in a teams uh, individual contribution is also there but uh, uh, teamwork is more encouraged um, and, and and more important that the use of technology is just to help the entire part i guess the word of ict in education is quite uh, part here we say that here the i and c are more important than t what does this mean is that the technology is used for information and communication so here the what information you are giving and uh, through which communication medium is more important than just underlying technology which can be any of this uh, okay which has been there but there are common ict tools which are used within the finnish schools there is a single portal in which the teachers and parents communicate uh, within tampere it is called help me uh, and and through which the, you can see the regular uh, step by step approach uh, for the students development which has been recorded on weekly basis uh, you can communicate uh, with the teacher through those portals you can communicate in person as well but uh, those who cannot be able to see it on regular daily basis they can be able to see it uh, there uh, on 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 on, on various sites uh, third impact about the entire part was about the uh, using uh, uh, technology like tablets and and and, and other parts into the regular uh, research uh, is is mainly uh, been given uh, the the finnish schools do not do not give the freedom to use mobile phones uh, uh, in the classroom but that doesn't stop uh, by using the uh, classroom uh, for using various technologies in including the tablets uh, there is a debate right now going on or the discussions and there are some many developments are going within the classrooms to come up with the new ict techniques and i guess one of the part is uh, getting tablets into the regular used uh, for the classroom uh, important aspect within the finnish schools is also concentrating on the physical education and sports so every school will have the equipped gym uh, equipped good ground facilities and the activities within the school period are quite occupies the large time of the total school time activities which are physical activities even learning with the activities many learning things like history like social sciences environmental sciences these are the issues uh, they discuss together and they go out in the class in the environment to check what is really there so just classroom is only one part where they can be able to assemble on a regular basis but classroom is not always the place where they they will learn Uh, they will learn at many other places so one of the place is classroom that's the beauty i guess where the flexibility and where the interest of a students can be developed so you can be able to see this all all places like every every school is also equipped with amazing kitchen facilities and the uh, uh, quality food uh, which is free for all the school teachers as well as for the uh, sorry for the students uh, so this is the entire picture in place uh, shrid would you like to comment on some of the points which are like we are less maybe heavy last 15 10 minutes are there because we started maybe 10 minutes late because of some like students are still like uh, participants are still were still joining in so we'll extend it for 5 minutes if everybody is okay uh, yeah now i think uh, we have less time so i would just like to uh take some points into consideration uh, you already mentioned most of them so i would like to say that in finland what is important is uh, that they trust their teachers very well and to trust uh, the teachers in first place uh, they have developed them uh, very well they, they have equipped them uh, with good education so the teacher training here is very extensive and uh, very uh, elaborated so that uh, the teacher when uh, she needs uh, or he needs to teach even to a first grader uh, they should have a masters degree 
that is the requirement and even uh, for the daycare uh, they have to have the bachelor's degree so uh, with this high level of uh, quality education and uh, practical um, experience the teachers are uh, very well equipped and they are um, like uh, very knowledgeable and they um, they know uh, what the students are uh, doing and what uh, what the students need and they keep on upgrading their knowledge they keep on uh, taking the uh, further trainings in their uh, like in service training uh, during uh, their service uh, service to in the school so that's uh, how they upgrade their knowledge and that's why uh, they have this freedom uh, to exhibit uh, their skills to exhibit their knowledge in their classrooms uh, according to the group of students they get so every year actually the uh, they are free to change the activities though the content the basic content always remains the same they can arrange when they can teach the things according to the students uh, uh, like for example i met one finnish teacher and uh, he was telling me that uh, last year i got a group Uh, which was interested more in a uh, reading and learning so i took more of the activities where they could read write and learn but this year i got a group which is more active so they want to do more activities so i take them to various places for field visits and then i um, make them active in the classroom as well so i uh, ask them to prepare presentations and give the presentations and talk to other um, students of from the other classroom as well so that's how um, they did it because the teachers has the freedom to do all these things and the uh, basic behind all uh, this finish education system is their policy educational policy they have in mind very clear that what they want out of the education they are very clear on that and though uh, the government might change after the elections but the basic policy always remains the same so nobody interferes in the education nobody interferes in into the educational or uh, policy decisions because they all understand the importance of education they all understand that if the population is educated then they will be able to progress so they are very clear about what they want from the education system and that's how they uh, they have been able to design the policy very well in detail with clear instructions no confusion and that's why the teachers are also sure of their roles what they can do what they cannot do what are the limits what are the boundaries and how to evaluate the students so everything is very clear that's how they can arrange the things according to the students group and that's how it becomes more personalized and that's why the students are also more interested in going to the school and attending the lectures and uh, giving the exams and uh, reading more gathering more information because they develop their thinking process that's what yeah that yeah i guess i guess the teachers education i guess uh, whatever is been mentioned is is a, is a there is a more typical word for teachers education what here we say is the research based teachers education or the teachers will come up with a degree with degree they will be research based teachers now this is a quite a typical uh, expression here the reason is that the, here the total teachers education spans for 5 years and the and the, to get into the teachers education uh, you become a teacher is very tough because only 10% of the applicants are get, are accepted for the teachers education they are been given 5 years of extensive training with a bachelor's degree and then master's degree all teachers are master's degree holder starting from first grade till graduation to wherever you you want to teach you should be master's degree holder in the masters in education and towards the end of the masters degree complete only with the thesis and thesis or the research based presentation will be on the common issues which are been done 
regular in the school through observations to actual working through some pedagogical tools through evaluation methods innovative methods for learning teaching so that is a mandatory requirement for all teacher to become a teacher uh, to have master's degree with a research aptitude and i guess that creates a lot of difference when delivering the content and creating a learning atmosphere within the classroom so and this is a conscious decision which was been taken in 1970s to have the great quality teachers to create a great quality systems and that gives the importance to the finnish education in this part so there are quick learning points here on the screen uh, first is no school till age of 7 preschool is mainly for the discipline values and social interactions not for giving data and information no writing nothing to be produced with the preschool first to sixth grade primary school no minimal like almost minimal homework uh, as well as the classroom is quite active uh, the arrangements is quite flexible uh, uh, teacher has autonomy to how to develop the students in many of the classrooms also you can be able to find that the one teacher is teaching to that class for first to sixth grade so the same teacher will be there for 6 years and that creates a good bond between the teacher and the students that's an amazing learning process for them as well 7 uh, to 9 secondary part is more concentrating on language and practical parts they can be choose from then career counseling which is the important part uh, as we discussed uh, there is a aut autonomy for the school has been given there are no dead ends practically the adult education within finland is quite mature and here we you, you can learn up to any limit uh, we could see even the adult education some of the colleges uh, the the students are of the age of 50 and 60s or even 65 uh, so that is a very good acceptable part uh, the vocational has a good amount of quality uh, of the students goes to vocational education from 42 to 51% half of the uh, uh, girls go to the vocational education that is the current statistics shows trusting the teacher and trusting the students uh, believing that students have their own experiences and knowledge and how they can be able to bring in to create a learning environment that's that's this this with here the quick, quick, quick points uh during 16th november till 19th november during the symposium on creative education we are uh, hosting here we are expecting many educators from all across the globe will be coming here so you are all welcome to see this whatever we are discussing here in practice uh, and this is the interesting part like we could be able to scratch one surface at the same time cc conducts this kind of training programs and webinars on regular basis there is a monthly webinars you can be able to see all the details about the webinars on our website ccefinland.org at the same time uh, you can be able to see the entire training courses which are been hosted by cc there are some online certificate courses the next course will start on 3rd and 4th of july uh, which is a creative teachers program there is a course on uh, ict technologies within the classrooms active classrooms these are various parts you can just go through this entire system uh, online you can be able to see the uh, this on on your screen so again i will just uh, request you to uh, be active on the classroom we have also uh, uh, our facebook page so you can just go to Uh, facebookcom finland and you can be able to provide your comment uh, on that and, and 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 please feel free to provide the information uh, if you have any creative methods uh, to be to, to be there uh, we are we are more than welcome uh, to include them in the current classrooms as well as uh, on regular basis we work with the many schools within finland as well as across the globe so cc is active across the globe even with more than 12 countries including uh, finland norway sweden uh, holland uh, in in hong kong 
as well as in Malaysia, in Cameroon, in, in African countries, uh, Nigeria, in India, Nepal, Sri Lanka. These are the areas in which we are quite active, USA as well. Uh, so, so this is the place where we are really working on the various research projects. And, and on, on this on this Facebook page, you can be able to see many activities, new programs, research based projects, uh, which have been there. So this is a brief in brief about what exactly is happening. So uh, are there any questions? I guess there are questions which have been pointed by the by the many uh, participants on the part. I guess we answered most of them through through our part, and we really thank you all for participating here. The same webinar is also available on the recorded mode on our website. So, uh, so, 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 so on the website you can be able to see inside the home page. This is a recorded version of the of the webinar. Uh, and, and 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 you are welcome to see uh, various uh, training courses which are already there uh, within within the CC part, which are which are presented here. So on behalf of CC and my team, uh, I yeah, I really thank all of you uh, for for giving us opportunity to share our thoughts and also giving your questions. Uh, thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.